Welcome to our final section in the textbook, 13.5 Nonlinear Functions. Ah, isn't that nice to be start, just to almost be done. So I sort of feel like I should just ramble on here a little bit just to make it just drag on for you, but I won't. We'll just keep going uh, like normal. Uh, so 13.5 Nonlinear Functions. So linear functions are pretty much everything we've worked with so far. It's when you have a straight line. Uh, a straight line is a linear function. Uh, so now we're, we're going to start working with nonlinear functions. Well, one of the first things we're going to talk about uh, is function notation. And function notation says that if you have a function, uh, you can, instead of calling it like y equals 2x plus 3, you can actually be more specific and tell us in the writing of this that it's a function by calling it a function involving the variable x is equal to 2x plus 3. Now this might seem like a strange uh, notation to you, and it is the first time, and it might even be the second time. But uh, this is a helpful notation because it tells us what is the variable that's changing. Well, in this case, the variable that's changing is x. Like, that's the one that we are in control of. Uh, that is your independent variable. Uh, and that's really what we care about when we're graphing things, is what's our independent variable. Uh, this notation sell, tells us that it's a function. So it's a function involving the independent variable x, and this is how you graph it. It's the equation 2x plus 3. Now, in practicality, what you can end up doing with this is uh, when you're trying to graph it, anytime you see that f of x notation, you can just get rid of it and pretend it's a y. Uh, and it will work exactly the same. So y equals 2x plus 3. Where function notation is helpful is you can now just say, uh, you can now just ask the question, what is f of 2? Uh, and so our x is then replaced with a 2. And so that would then tell us that we're going to replace the x in our equation with a 2. So this would actually just be 2 times 2 plus 3. Well, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 is 7. So f of 2 is 7. And so that's just one of those sort of mathematical shorthands that just starts showing up as you get into higher levels of math. So it's helpful to see it here. So let's just say you are juggling three juggling balls. Uh, and the height h in feet of the ball can be found using the equation h equals negative 16t squared plus 20t plus 3, where t is the number of seconds after you let go of the ball. Write a function that models the height of the ball x seconds after you let go of it. Use function notation. Well, in this case, uh, we're using function notation, so we'll just say f of x, and that's going to be the height of the ball. Well, f of x, we're replacing h with that. And now we're saying that it's x seconds. Well, t we, were, we originally had as our number of seconds, so we're just replacing the t with an x. So it's just going to be negative 16x squared plus 20x plus 3. And now if we want to evaluate when x is equal to 0 0.5, well, that just says that it's f of 0 0.5, which is equal to negative 16. We're replacing the x with a 0 0.5 squared plus 20, 0 0.5 plus 3. And if we go ahead and type that into our calculator real quick, negative uh, 16 times 0 0.5 squared plus 20 times 0 0.5 plus 3, we will come out to an answer of 9. So after half a second, the height of the ball is going to be 9 feet off the ground. Ooh. So, ah, this is our next section. Uh, there we go, now it showed up. Uh, we need to figure out which is the graph of this function. f of x equals x squared minus one. So this would be the same as thinking of it as y equals x squared minus one. Well, if you remember, uh, y equals x squared was a graph, why no? We haven't graphed this yet in this class, that was in my other class. So actually, uh, let's first just think about the graph and figure out what does the graph look like for y equals x squared. 
Well, let's see what happens if we plug in a zero for x. So we just make a little x, y table, plug in a zero for x, zero squared is zero. Uh, and of course, now I'm second guessing myself on that route. Ignore the last 20 seconds. We're gonna go back to the actual equation that we're working with for this section. So we're going to work with this equation of y equals x squared minus one. So when x is zero, we'll go and plug a zero in for our x squared. Uh, zero squared is zero minus one is negative one. So that means when our x value is zero, our y value should be negative one. Well, when our x is zero, our y value here should be negative one there, but it's not, it's up here. So that one doesn't work. Uh, when our x value is zero here, our y value is negative one. So far, this is working. Uh, at x equals zero, y is equal to negative one. So far, this one's working. And when x is equal to zero, y is equal to negative one. So far, this one is working. What I will say, this is a linear function. Uh, it's a straight line. Straight lines only happen when your highest power on your x is a one. Since our highest power here is a two, I can guarantee you right now that one's not going to be correct. So that will help narrow it down to just two options for us. It either goes up or it goes sideways. Now, uh, probably our easiest way is just to check another point. A terrible idea of a point to check would be at the point uh, negative one, zero. The reason being at negative one, zero, we will have the same point on both of these graphs. So it wouldn't make any sense to check that point. But we could check this point because at positive one, zero, we have different answers. Or I guess not positive one, zero, but just when our x is equal to positive one. So if we come up here and we check positive one for our x, one squared is one, minus one is zero. Hey, so that works for this one. It does not work for that one. So we have our final answer. So that's one way that you can just check and see which graph matches the function that you have. Now, the next thing is called something called the vertical line test. And this is a test uh, for if you have the graph of a function, or actually just the graph of an equation in general, to figure out if that equation is a function or not. Uh, and if you remember, our definition of a function a few chapters back was if for every input there's only one output. So if we have an x value of zero, it should only have one y value that comes off of it. I choose that number carefully because in this third graph here, when our x value is zero, we actually have two different y values that have an x value of zero. So that is not a function. Well, this is where the vertical line test actually comes into play, is instead of trying to like find a function that way, you can just look at the graph and draw a straight line up and down through the graph. And if you can never find a place where it will cross more than once, it is a function. But like on this third graph, when it goes and goes through two different points, it will end up uh, not being a function because for your one X value, at least at one point you have two Y values and that's not legal. So uh, let's go and check the vertical line test. Well, if I go and I just draw a vertical line, really no matter where I draw it on this graph, it's only crossing once. So is that a function? Yes, it is a function uh, because your vertical line will only ever pass through the graph once. On the second graph, right here it's a function. It, it passes through only once. It just touches it briefly and keeps going. But as soon as I go further to the right, I'm going through two spots at the same time on the same line. That fails the vertical line test. So this is not a function. So that's it. That's all the more there is to the lesson this time. So good luck. And as always, let me know if you have any questions.